Of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and of all the saints. Amen. Amen. I'd like to invite the children forward at this time, if you'd like to come forward for our family worship service. I'm going to sit in the chair today and place it on the ground. It's a little easier. Now, a lot of you are early saints, like St. Matthew and St. John, and even further back to Abraham and even Adam. I think I heard of Adam. Wow. Well, I'm a little more recent. I'm only at 450 years old. How about that? So my name is Richard Hooker. Do you see this? And if I had time to get the collar right with toilet paper rolls and paper towel rolls and all that, I would have made a big old collar. And he has a long beard, which I started to grow, but it takes a lot longer to get way down here. So who is, who am I? Who is Richard Hooker? Well, he's considered a doctor of the church. That's why I'm wearing a doctoral gown as well as a doctoral hat. This is actually my own robe from Harvard Divinity, from my Master in Divinity, which is also the same robe, except I have a different hat when I was there. It's a flat hat. But I think it matches our fellow right here. I was only 47 when I died. Pretty young. But I was born in 1554, one year after Queen Mary ascended the throne. We had, of course, King Henry VIII, and then we had Edward VI, who reigned for six years, whose mother was Jane Seymour. And Queen Mary, the reigning monarch, her mother was Catherine of Aragon, who was the first wife of King Henry VIII. She was also the aunt of the Holy Roman Emperor. And that's probably why the Pope did not grant Henry a divorce, because he didn't want to shame his protector's aunt the Holy Roman Emperor. So I was born in 1554, and I died in 1600, on November the 3rd. Well, what does all saints have to do with us today? I'm going to ask your parents and grandparents to look in the prayer book on page 15 right now, and they can see specifically what we call the principal feast of the church. There are seven principal feasts, which means celebration, and the first four on the left-hand side of page 15 are within the Easter cycle. We have Easter, Ascension Day, 40 days after Pentecost, 50 days after Easter, and Trinity Sunday. On the right-hand side, we have two for the Christmas season. We have Christmas Day, Christmas Day and Epiphany. And then we have this thing called All Saints Day, which is in November, which is really, really weird why it's in November, right? The first 800 years of the church, All Saints Day was celebrated in May. What's that? That's, I know, it's right by Halloween. Yeah, it's like close to Halloween, exactly. Did you dress up last night? Did you go out? What'd you wear? I was, I was Captain America, oh my goodness, you are going with the trend right now. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, in the year 800, which is way before I was born, the um, Anglo-Saxon scholar Alcuin changed the All Saints Day to November the 3rd. And then the Bishop of Salzburg decided to do the same, and then the Pope saw the trend and decided to get on board, and he changed it to the first Sunday in November, November 1st. So, one of the things about my life is I wrote a huge volume of books called The Laws of Ecclesiastical Polity. Olivia, I want you to feel this book, and I want you to see how heavy that is. How many pounds do you think that is? Two. Two. I think a little more. That's got to be over ten pounds. Well, I had volumes and volumes and volumes and volumes and volumes and volumes of something like this that I wrote. 
that was my big work. That was my big work. It took a long time. But the base of that was a philosophical base on Aristotelian base on Aristotle, those of you who may know that. And so we talked about, I talked about in my life being the father of Anglicanism, which is what I've been called recently, about scriptural revelation, tradition, and reason, and experience. And that's the three-legged stool we talk about. I don't have a stool. If I had a three-legged stool, I'd, fall, I'd probably fall over. But scripture, tradition, and reason. And then there's a fourth one, experience. The Methodist church uses those four legs, and there's... And yet, in our own sense of Anglicanism, the fourth leg experience is woven into the third leg of reason. And I came about the time when Queen Elizabeth was about, since Mary, her predecessor, was very, very Catholic, and Elizabeth decided to actually come back to the middle. It's called the Elizabethan Settlement. So she used the best of both worlds, the Protestant Church and the Catholic Church. And so we call that the Via Media, the middle way. And we've always been known in our tradition of being both Catholic and Protestant, Catholic and Reformed. So the current Archbishop of Canterbury is of the Reformed tradition, the Evangelical tradition. The one before him was of the Catholic tradition. The next one after this one will be of the Catholic tradition. It's every other one in order to honor that history. And that person's appointed by the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II. But her ancestor, Queen Elizabeth I, was when I did most of my writing and most of my life at that time. And we, I had a big problem with the Puritans, who were influenced by a man named John Calvin. I want to read you something. So the English Puritans held that no church not so governed by their arguments could claim to be Christian. Now, that wasn't very inclusive. So I had a little issue with that. And I decided that I wanted to change some of that and, and get us back into more of what became the Via Media. That's why I guess they called me a doctor of the church and why I became the father of Anglicanism. And I want to tell you a little bit about my writings. The Anglican approach to religious truth, the via media, the middle road, differs from the Puritans who gave me a really, 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 really hard time. Puritans on one hand and the Pope on the other. So I said something has to lie in the middle. And so even though my tome, my writing is very heavy and very, very theological. In the first chapter, I write, those unto whom we shall seem tedious are no wise injured by us, seeing that it lies in their own hands to spare themselves the labor they are unwilling to endure. Now, you know what the translation of modern English means? It means, if you can't take the intellectual heat, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> and you know what else it means? If you can't stand a book that makes you think, then go and read the funny papers. How many of you like the funny papers? How many of you read the comics? Well, actually, Pope Clement VIII died two years after me, actually agreed with my writing. And you know what he said about this ginormous laws of ecclesiastical polity? He said, quote, it has in it such seas of eternity that it will abide until the last fire shall consume all learning. That's a pretty good endorsement, I think. So now I can retire. <laughs> the papal endorsement. You know, there's a saint's day they named after me, and I'm really, really grateful for that, since I am the father of Anglicanism, so they say. 
And one of the prayers that the church wrote for me, I'm going to read you this as we conclude. O God of truth and peace, who didst raise up thy servant Richard Hooker in a day of bitter controversy, to defend with sound reasoning and great charity the Catholic and Reformed religion. Grant that we may, make, may maintain the middle way, not as a compromise for the sake of peace, but as a comprehension for the sake of truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And when you guys grow up, I hope in the Episcopal Church, the Anglican Church, you'll know that this man, Richard Hooker, is our father, our grandfather, our patriarch, if you will, of Anglican theology. He's the one who taught us to be both and, not either or. To be inclusive, not exclusive. And to continue that same path that came in the interpretation of Christ's love for all that we may follow Christ this day and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Awesome.